What thought asks, how did you make this? I am glad you asked what thought. Okay, so let's have a look at the blend file. I'm gonna zoom way out. You see, I've got this like terrain. I made this in a program called World Machine. This is about 300 kilometers by 300 kilometers. We've got the city. You'll notice it's all kind of radially symmetrical, right? You see, this is the real one and it's getting duplicated. Uh, these fields are part of it. They're, they're offset by one just by accident, but it doesn't really matter. If we click on one of these, we can see that this has a, has a geometry nodes group, which is instancing some collection. This one is called ring trapez one. They all have names like this. So this one will be ring pent one. See the pentagon and trapeziums, depending on which shape they are. So there's only a few unique building types. I don't know, maybe like a dozen or so. So they're all duplicated inside a collection called uh, buildings, I think, or it might, be, it might be just inside blocks. And then this object radial duplicates that again so if we see we can't we can't click on them here we can only click on the radio because these aren't real uh, and i've made it so you can like hide individual ones in scenes where you can only see one of these it's just more efficient to only have one visible so let's go to this collection templates they're all at the center when you instance a collection in blender it will do it like is it in world space is that how you say it like if, if the things in the collection are offset it will instance them offset as well so th this is just one of the blocks um and you can see if if I click on one of these, these are actually curves and these have a pretty complex geometry node set up on them uh, that lets you instance like turrets and stuff, which we will get into in a minute. But basically you can, you can grab this, uh, you can do all this kind of stuff to it. You can move it around and show we just, let's, let's, let's add a turret. We have loads of values we can change here. We can change like the translation, obviously, just like where they are. Let's set the Y to zero and we can change the, the rotation. That's a little bit broken. Uh, it's not really designed for that. You can change the curve, tilt, that's like which which side they appear on. You can change the start size, the end size, which is like how many it kind of chops off the start and the end. The scale, so we could do something like that. Obviously you can change which model this is. This is the model which is normally used. Change the scale, change the Ooh, change the distance a little bit uh, a little bit sensitive so there's some other things you can do so you can change the the base taper I'll explain how this works in a sec change the base height right so if you if you have them like clipped inside here you don't want them you want to have like this but you don't want them to kind of come out here you can change the base height so it kind of looks to your liking let's just move these if you move these the base height stays the same so that's good and then we can get some windows okay so we can click enable windows also you can add a bobble and you can just change the bobble scale power um so this this is related to the the scale of the thing you can see it kind of changes with it let's just change scale these down a bit i normally have them kind of more like that you can see um and what else can we do so we can get the windows so we want to have i believe it's just called windows one isn't it yes there you go there we go these these windows you can change the uh the offset, you can change like the, the rotation, all that kind of stuff. And the, the scale, obviously, uh, you can change the number horizontally and uh, vertically as well. Let's have a look at the node network that does this all. As you can see, it's quite large. <laughs> this is the node network. So these are all just, these are just the inputs, right? These are just like, like that. These are all the inputs, which are all all here. In, in a node network, when you have values driven like by the group input, it means you can have a separate one per instance of the object, which is really useful because it means you don't have to have a different node network for each object. So then we've got this group, which I normally close, which is the turret instancer. You can have four different kinds of turret on one building. So hence four of these four turret instances. And then the building curve, what does this do? This will convert it into a curve. We've got the end caps. These will add these bits, like the, they make the ends curved. In fact, what happens if I get rid of this? See, we get rid of the end caps or one of the end caps at least. And then we got, we got uh, two set material. So it will select by the vertex groups of these and it'll set like which material they have can we go into so you can see it sets all the materials based on which vertex group they're assigned uh, at this point i should explain how it's doing all of this kind of stuff oh of course now i should show you we can see this building i've edited is now being instanced all around here so it looks really fucking weird okay so we've got so this is the base of the tower shape right so it's what's getting instanced here is is this so this gets cut in half and used as the end caps there's also in the collection a bobble instancer which is where it spawns the bobble, obviously, so, just so it knows where to spawn it. Then we've got the shape, which is just like a 2D kind of thing. And this gets revolved, right? So, so this basically has a screw modifier on it. If I edit the shape, it will edit 
all of them, like which is really useful because you can make changes really quickly. So if we go here, we see we have these vertex groups, and these are just um, all that have this vertex group. It knows it's an end cap, which basically means it knows to delete half of it so that it doesn't like overlap. These are like to set the materials a row wall, and you can see if we go here, um, it has this little frame which sets the materials. So, you know, th this is the named attribute. It selects the parts which have all these various attributes. It's doing an and operation to take a bit, also an end cap, and then it just sets the material selected by this, basically. And it does that. It does a few iterations of that to set them all. Um, fancy scale. These are the bits which it knows to push down to whatever height the base height is, right? So it knows it is to extend it. Like, for example, these don't have it, so it's not doing that to any of it. The turret instancer is, like, almost as complex as this big node network. So here it is. Basically, it does two things. It instances the turrets. Like, it resamples the curve and it instances the turrets on the points of the resampled curve, and you can obviously set the distances, like you set the sampling rate of the curve and stuff. So it needs to make a cylinder, or a sort of, what's the word, a frustum here, which is the same proportions as the tower. It needs to have like the same kind of curvature and stuff. So basically it will generate a curve, um, and the start point of this curve is just set to some arbitrary value, and the end point is set based on couple values, mainly the the base snap height and then the translation and rotation and scale and stuff are like factored in. So then we set the curve radius, right? The start point is just set to some arbitrary value again, but the end point is set based on the curve taper amount. And then after that, we can convert the curve to a mesh. And before we do that, I can't really show you this in the viewer, but we're resampling the curve. So before this, the curve basically looks like that, and we're only setting the endpoints radius. The reason we do that is because if we uh, did it the other way around and resample the curve after converting it to a mesh, it would only select this end bit and it would kind of be totally straight and then uh, flare out just on the last uh, edge loop, so that would be bad. So the way that we control how much geometry it has is with these two values. So it will resample the curve based on this vertical count, and it will set the resolution of this curved circle, which is used to generate the mesh based on the horizontal count, as you can see. Um, and then it will just set the material, it will um, use, look at these two values, let's, let's use the viewer actually. So it, it, it will use these two values, min height, max height, to delete geometry which is above or below a certain height. And then it just merges that with the um, tower model. This hasn't had its base height set yet, which is why it looks kind of weird and flared like that. And then it will just instance the windows on all of the faces of that frustum with some rotation and translation and scale offsets. Let's have a look at the roads. So you have this piece of road, which is like the base piece of road. This has the same thing with the vertex groups, which set the materials. It has this bit here, which will instance the road tiles. It has some little bits here, which will instance the trees on them. So it instances these little sections, right, of, of several pieces of road. Then it does that a few times. It has like um, an object, which is just like several points, and it instances these little groups of them on each point. Um, and then we have the radial instances, um, which is just kind of an arbitrary amount, and they're scaled slightly. If I change this, yeah, you can see these ones, because I'm changing the number down. There are like fewer and fewer of them. Same goes for all of these. This is a bit kind of convoluted, just because it has to do it for like a bunch of these. And then this this very, very slightly scaled, you can see, just to make it fit. And if you zoom way in, you'll see it's actually slightly misaligned, but we won't tell anyone about that. Yeah, and then you have another bit which instances these intersections. There are three kinds of intersections. Obviously, this is the bit that instances the, the radial bits of the road. So, like, if we do this, we'll do it. It'll change. Yes, yeah, see, it changes how many there are in each group. Oh, yes, it instances the trees here. It does this after everything else, so the trees don't need to be realized, because that makes the scene build time way longer when you're rendering. Uh, intersections A. So, this this is intersection A. So, this is just um, instances those. Uh, like, there's an object and they get instanced on the vertices of that object. Intersection B, same story. Uh, which one is intersection B? I think, it's, I think it's this one. And then intersection C, which is this one. I think that is pretty much it for the roads. Uh, let's have a look at the radial one. I think that's kind of the final one. Uh, radial, so this does a few things. This instances foliage and it instances these trees. And it instances also, you can turn it on, it gets really laggy. 
the hedgerows. The instancing of trees and hedgerows and stuff is done in the radial thing after everything else, just again, so they don't have to be realized. So if we look at one of these blocks, you can see you have these bits here. These just tell it where to instance the trees. If it finds an object called instance tree, it will instance a tree on its vertexes. It's choosing whether to instance a, like a pine tree or a deciduous tree based on some noise, right? Which means it's like, kind of deterministic, like a tree in this location will always be the same one. And originally I was doing it, I was just picking like a, using the random value node. The problem with that is whenever I change something, all the trees would like re-randomize and it was a bit weird because you'd have shots and then maybe you moved one thing and then all the trees were randomized, it was bad for continuity. So now I've just got very like highly scaled noise. So a tree in one location will always be the same kind. Uh, you see it's just checking if it's greater than 0.5. Based on whether or not it is, it is picking the instance index. Oh yeah, we've got the paths. Let's have a look at the paths. These are obviously the, the smaller pathways. Let's have a look at the topology of these because it's pretty freaky pretty wild topology. Um, basically, the way this works is they are paths and then they're kind of, you know, curved to meshed. Um, but the problem with that is that they overlap. Like you get these weird like black bits where it's Z fighting at the intersections. So then they're they're remeshed basically in geometry as they're converted to a to a volume, then back to a mesh. What do we do? We delete the bottom half just to save polygons and then there's no uh, decimate node to my knowledge. So it's de they're decimated with a modifier. The topology is really bad. It gives you this kind of nice curve effect at the edge though and they don't overlap. It almost looks more natural. You don't really see it and it runs fine. And these are obviously duplicated as well. That's how the, the paths are done. Maybe, okay, I'll have a look at the grass. Sod it, where is the grass? Um, ground, yeah, ground. So let's look, yeah, here we are. So these are the ground bits. They go underneath the buildings a bit. They're obviously duplicated radially. Um, the edges of the, of the streets go down a bit, right? They slant downwards until they meet the grass. So they're like slightly below the grass and that gives the illusion that the grass fits perfectly without having to make sure that it was like really aligned. And these have a modifier on them, which basically just duplicates these like four times say and it has this material on it so basically it's a noise texture um, and it kind of has an alpha on it and the higher up you go the more alpha it will be and it creates this illusion uh, from the right angle that there's sort of a bit of depth to it like sort of blades of grass and stuff it also has these kind of this extra layer of noise which is just white spots with little yellow bits in the middle to look like daisies yeah there you go you can see from that angle it looks quite cool so it's just like several duplicates of the ground material with this sort of transparent material on them apart from the bottom one the bottom one's not transparent uh, and then the little white dots and I think it does the job uh, it's it's decent it looks a bit weird and kind of suburban like it's a very flat thing and I think in reality Jean would sort of be much more interesting terrain you have like long grass and like you know, it wouldn't just be like very short moan kind of things. I did have a time limit and it's quite difficult to do. And also for performance reasons, this was this city was already running really fucking slow. So let's let's get back to layout. So yeah, that is pretty much it. Um, obviously it's not a totally in-depth rundown of how it works. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. Ciao, ciao.